Hideo Kojima's creation of the game Death Stranding, even from the teaser trailers, made me curious from the start. Not by the game graphics, the music, or the fact that Norman Reedus is the main character, but by the strangeness of its creative world. I have played the game to the point of completing it, but I still had questions about its origins and history. And so I began to explore it, making this two episode analysis of the world of Death Stranding, with perhaps spoilers about the main storyline. So, let's begin. This is two takes, and this is one shot. The first analysis of Death Stranding. The spectral Earth, the concept of the living and the dead becoming intermingled, where the borders are blurred and overlapping seem to be a prominent thing, even a devastatingly dangerous one. But we have been aware of this, have we not? Through the many trailers left in the waiting period of this game, theories have come to light about whether it's beings from another planet or entities from a different plane of existence. The latter has become the right one, even if it means a world for the spirits. So what happened in the world of Death Stranding? Throughout the game, the further you venture into the storyline, the more information you can grasp together to get a better understanding of what has happened. And with that information, as well as various other types of research, I have found an approximate storyline within our own history that Kojima has taken and made his own. Therefore, there will be links from our world to the spectral one. At the beginning of the game, we hear Sam say this. Once there was an explosion, a bang which gave birth to time and space. Once there was an explosion, a bang which set a planet spinning in that space. Once there was an explosion, a bang which gave rise to life as we know it. And then came the next explosion. Let's look at each comment as four points. The first being an explosion gave birth to time and space. This is a direct reference to the Big Bang and the creation of the universe around 13.7 billion years ago. The second, a bang that set a planet spinning into space, is referencing the act of a supernova, the death of a star, and the dust from it that collides within itself, creating planets and eventual life. Through the death of stars comes new life. The third comment, a bang which gave rise to life as we know it, goes further than the creation of a planet, but the evolution of the major groups of animals first appear in the fossil record. This time period, because of the acceleration of the evolution in such a short space of time, was coined the Cambrian explosion, and thus is in the third explosion that Sam talks about. The last one, the next explosion that will be our last, is referencing what is going to happen with the universe of Death Stranding, an explosion that will eventually come and tip the balance of life and death in the earthly plane, its importance be compared to that as the Big Bang. This explosion is inevitable by Sam's reference to this being our last one. What is not explained is how or why. But the comment of Cain, the next explosion, hints that it might have already happened before the player begins the game. It is during the conversations the main character, Sam, has with Hartman, another character, that it explained and theorized in more detail. Hartman essentially theorized that the Death Stranding has happened at least five times in the past. What he is referencing to is the five major mass extinctions, a real-life thing that happened on Earth, to which Kojima has referenced in his universe. A mass extinction in itself can be defined as a time period in which a large percentage of all known species go extinct, with the cause differing or overlapping, such as climate change, geologic catastrophes, or the meteor strikes on Earth's surface. The most known one is the fifth mass extinction, the KT, best known for the elimination of most of the dinosaurs. The connection of the mass extinctions to the world of Death Stranding are linked by Hartman explaining an extinction entity, or EE, is a living being whose purpose is to bring about mass extinctions and the discovery of umbilical cords, the meaning will be explained later, that were connected to these extinction entities. From our archaeological findings of the prior strandings, the previous EEs may have been a holy mammoth, Neanderthal, a dinosaur, and a tribalite. Not in that order, of course. Each EE corpse was discovered to not have suffered biological decay and possessed an umbilical cord, similar to BTs. Another thing to be explained later. 
Throughout the world of Death Stranding, it is said that five EEs, the big five, are believed to have lived and died, each being the cause of a prior mass extinction on Earth, linking to our Earth's five mass extinctions, resulting in significant changes to the world's biodiversity. Even if we aren't together, we will always be connected. EEs may not need to act in any particular way to fulfill their function. Their existence in itself may simply be a crystallization of the forces that underlie the Death Stranding, the point at which the living world and the other side begin to spill into one another, which has already happened with the world Sam is in. EEs cannot go willingly against their purpose to cause a mass extinction, but can seemingly bend the rules to delay or lessen the extinction event. It is revealed that the previous EEs had the power to end all life, but each chose to let life prevail in the end, due to their own attachment to the living world. Ultimately, it is theorised that EEs are a natural part of the cycle of life and death. Each entity's death stranding altered the world in such a way that in the wake of death and destruction, new life forms emerged and were able to flourish. Comparing the real five mass extinctions to the death stranding's ex explanation of theirs, it can boil down to the same aspect that death is never truly in our hands. Whether it's earthly climate change and the survival of the fittest, or the chosen path of an entity that has begun to love life but cannot stop their purpose. It is the saddening and realistic fact that we are all going to die. But is death truly the end? In the world of Death Stranding, it is understood that the line between the living and the dead is essentially a blurred one, if not a collision of two worlds. BTs, named beach things, Entities whose souls are from the deceased and come into existence when that soul fails to cross through the beach, a corridor or path if you will, into the world of the dead, consequently become stranded in the world of the living, where their connection to the other side maintains through an umbilical cord. The bridge between life and death. The death stranding occurred concurrently with the first recorded sighting of a BT by a doctor performing a cesarean section on a brain-dead mother. Why is this performance the thing that created the beach thing? It is understood further in the story that it's because of BBs, or bridge babies. It is unborn fetus that has been taken from the brain dead mother to be used as equipment by bridges operatives. The fetus is placed in an orange liquid in a glass-like container, a portable pod, that can grant operatives the ability to sense and detect BTs when physically connected. These portable pods simulate the conditions of a still mother's womb, which is updated periodically. There is some conversations within the game that remind the user that it is equipment, however, this is difficult to comprehend as it is a living thing. The connection from this fetus being born in this position gives them the edge that the living can use, hence the naming of it a simple equipment. From further explorations of entities, BTs are considered extremely dangerous and are almost invariably hostile towards living things. They are dangerous in the normal sense, such as they are otherworldly beings that try to kill you, but also in the sense that bodies of a BT contain antimatter. They are presented as flickering black matter that eventually takes the form of something that looks like human dripping in tar. It comes to the theory that they cannot see the living, but rather listen to footsteps and breathing when hunting. They float up to 10 feet from the ground, connected by a shimmering black umbilical cord. In this instance, the umbilical cord is a literal connection from two different worlds, the world of the living and the world of the dead. When hunting, they drop down, becoming invisible with only their human palm prints being shown on the ground, being filled with tar in each one. If they find the source of the noise, the ground becomes tar and many black human masses emerge and drag you down to its depths. It's at this point, the collision of matter of a living thing with a BT made out of antimatter that triggers a void out, a massive explosion capable of destroying everything in its wake. In the universe of Death Stranding, this is commented upon, showing cities to be destroyed because of these void outs. Therefore, in a world in which you can die by coming into contact with strangely formed black antimatter, to your soulless body, after a certain amount of time, you'll be able to cause an explosion that can emphasize that death is not the final act. It is a difficult world to live in, whereas a wrong turn or a wrong decision can become the responsibility of others to take care of your body. If not, then your life is stuck between worlds, and the end that was wanted or unwanted will never cease to be. There will be no end but this long purgatory-like existence between two worlds. 
Cremation of the body before it turns into a BT is the best course of action for this to be stopped. However, understanding the first part of the game, this is unfortunately not always done. To get a better understanding of the link between the world of the living and the dead, there is a constant inclusion of the words, the beach, within the game. And like I said before, in essence, it is like a corridor or a path from one world to the next. The understanding of those words used, rather than any other physical place, is because it is seen as a border or a transitioning point, like land to sea and life to death. This can be referenced in other various films such as The Discovery 2017, of how people see flashes of people, much like the flickering of a BT, and perhaps a transcendental place that is open and wild. It can be debated as to why people discuss this afterlife and describe it much like a tunnel. However, a beach, with its never-ending coastline, can be soothing, giving the person the time to wander. The sea, though calming on the surface, can perhaps be seen as alive, gripping someone to its depths. Not a calling per se, but more like a journey, one last hurdle before the afterlife. What is so fascinating, that within the world of Death Stranding, there is more than one beach. Overall, each person has their own beach, unless a void out happens, to which a large population of people share one beach to get to the other side, and this can be said for times of war when people die at the same time. The beach does not experience time, and acts as a sort of limbo. It is a manifestation of mankind's consciousness and the personal conception of death, and as such, the beach is a phenomenon, common to all and unique to each human. Each beach, if not shared, is personal to that person, given form by their thoughts and set of beliefs. If it is shared, such as the people that died in a war, then there are mixed feelings and emotions that stem from a want or need for something, and therefore they follow the same actions in the last moments over and over. The beach is often described as a multiverse, as all souls inhabit a personal beach, in contrast to the land of the living, where everyone's physical body inhabits the same universe. In this essence, no other animal can manifest the beach, only human, and they therefore do not decay and form a BT. This is quickly presented at the very beginning of the game, by showing birds and deer to be running away, but still getting killed. Understanding the concept of BTs and beaches, its creation was based on the antimatter Carillium, particles that ignore time and were born in the same way our universe was. We just never saw it until the Death Stranding. The word chiral comes from the Greek word kir, meaning hand. Do you remember me explaining about the BTs hunt? They're shown by only their hands. Another aspect of this is when they are pushed to the on to the other side, the land of the dead. They leave something behind, one or both Cairo hands, modelled out of what looks like golden crystals, pointing upwards, almost in a plea, perhaps indicating the yearn to forge a connection with us in a living world. In our world, Cridium was also found in the mineral Bridgemite, in the lower part of the Earth's mantle. It compromises a 30% of the Earth and usually very hard to find. It was found and researched, however, by a meteorite before the Death Stranding. It is said that Corellium absorbed into the mineral at the moment of the Earth's creation, and this could perhaps explain the tar that bubbles up from BT handprints and in unexpected places on the Earth's crust. It links Corellium on many levels to this world from the very beginning, and in a way, it can be said that the heart of our planet could be likened to the world of the dead. We are closer to death than we think. Knowing the beach and what it manifests, we can now understand the concept of beach things and why they are stranded. But what does that really mean, the word stranded? Especially when it comes to the title Death Stranding? If you look at all of the meanings, they all possess a certain importance in the main story arc. Being stranded is when you are isolated, without means of transportation, the idea that you cannot go home. Stranding means being washed up on the shore. Ships do this. And, if you haven't seen this already, Whales and dolphins strand themselves on beaches, commonly called cetacean stranding, due to dehydration, collapsing under their own weight, or drowning when high tide covers the blowhole. And a strand refers to something thin, like a wire or fibre, that together can form a rope or bond. BTs are stranded in the living world because of their strand, their umbilical cord, in so many words. Their connection to the world of the dead, the final race in place, has been severed. Stranding is what is happening in the essence of death, 
You die, and you are stranded between worlds. It is the act of the Void Elves. And the Strand, the thing that connect them all together. Sam Strand, for one, and his journey west. And the dead, with their journey west to the land of the dead. This aspect, as well as others, will be further explored in episode 2, The Journey West. What are your thoughts on what was discussed in this episode? Comment and let me know to open up a conversation. Like and subscribe for more content of this nature, and come talk to me on Twitter or Instagram. Better yet, support the show on my Patreon to help a creator such as myself with learning on the go. Each like, each comment, each subscriber fuels the motivation I need to make better and better content for yours truly. Come say hi, and thanks for watching.